night man it is great man seeing you all uh men on the wall we need some men on the wall and, and not the southern border all right let me be very clear about that <laughs> so uh if you got your bibles we're going to be in the book of ezekiel tonight ezekiel 33 no so gonna... <laughs> you know where i'm going man <laughs> I sure do. so let me get than that i mean there's there's portions of the bible i wish i could have said you know, maybe like Nelson's Bible. Oh, they weren't in mine, so I didn't. I didn't read it, so I'm immune from it. But Ezekiel 33 is in mine, and it's in my computer, and it's on my phone, and it's pretty much in every Bible that I own in the house. Ezekiel 33 makes us 100 percent responsible. You see, let me give you a little history background on that. The city walls of you know of, of Israel, there were you know all these great cities were fortified cities protected by walls. So they would have a watchman stand on the wall at night, pretty much you know around the clock, with a shofar, a trumpet, you know. And if they would see the enemy at night, they would blow the shofar, wake the entire city up. Basically, they knew the enemy was coming, and there was a forewarning of an imminent attack. So the people slept at night knowing that there was a watchman on the wall. You could sleep easy at night knowing that that was happening. Today, we don't have a watchman on the wall. We have, you know, we sleep better at night knowing that there's police officers patrolling our cities at night, that we have an army at the ready in case something happens, you know, internationally that will respond to any foreign invasion. So we pretty much lay our heads Okay, and I knowing that that these entities and that these men and women are there to do battle at the ready for our defense, for our protection. But Ezekiel's looking at this from a spiritual point of view. God is saying, if the enemy comes and the watchman does nothing and the people die, I will hold the watchman accountable. The blood will be on his hands. But if the watchman blows the trumpet and the people decide that they want to perish, well, that's on them. And he says, son of man, I've appointed you to be a watchman over the house of Israel. So he he didn't say, I've appointed your your sons. I've appointed your daughters. I've appointed your preachers or your teachers or anyone else. He said he's appointed a man. He said he took a man from the community and put him up there. That's us. That is us. We are the watchman that stands over Israel. I'm not talking, you know. Israel, 10,000 miles away, Israel in the Middle East. Our Israel is our home. That is where we are supposed to be, that watchman. That is where we're supposed to stand at the wall, at the ready. So when the enemy comes in a spiritual sense to come, to steal, to destroy, we are to warn our families. We are to warn our brethren, hey, the enemy is coming here, and we need to be the ones that are sounding the alarm. You know, the world around us is getting crazier by the moment. Without saying, I think we're living in probably some of the most tumultuous times in history. I mean, I, I've never witnessed such just outright atrocity and lunacy that's going on in the world around us. I mean, between a lying government, lying media, people turning a blind eye to sin, calling things for what they're not. And the the worst part about it is there's no outcry from the church of Jesus. There is no outcry. 
we we've you know this whole week you know we spent this entire week watching videos from what's going on within Cuba and, and and the beatings to the people there and then you know I turn you know I turn on and and watch the State Department and say oh no well they're they're protesting for COVID nineteen and I'm like the, the the most powerful country on earth when I've I've sacrificed for I've worn the uniform for that holds the largest military on earth that can destroy the planet 10 times over is going to tell me that number one, the first thing was, I don't know they, we don't know why the Cubans are protesting. And number two, they're protesting because of vaccines. And then CNN says it's because of climate change. So how does the most powerful nation on earth with the most sophisticated technology on earth doesn't know what's going on in a third world country, 90 miles from its shores. That's the question to beg, but that's for a different topic in a whole different situation. That is not what I am concerned about. That is not what me as a watchman should be concerned about. But it's happening. The, war, the enemy is fluctuating in around us each and every day. I, I read a report where the Department of Defense has labeled, and I'm not making this up. I wish this was some internet hoax. But this came from a very, very reliable, you know, news outlet, you know, and they on the top five of their most. How can I how can I even say this most concerned about, you know, they have Hamas, they have Al Qaeda, they have different terrorist groups and Christianity made the top five Christians now are considered. Pretty much a terrorist group in the eyes of the Department of Defense. There, the FBI is currently asking if, you know, if you feel that your relatives are, are extremists, religious extremists, you know, right wing, right wing Christian extremists, that you need to turn them in. This is happening. 2021. We are we are labeled. Christianity is now labeled among terrorist groups. Now, probably a lot of you didn't hear this. But I have, the, I have the news article there, the resource. I'd be happy to share it with anyone. And that's where we're at right now. That's where we are at as, as, as not only as a nation, but as the people that believes in Jesus Christ. Now, the world is coming for us one way or another. They're trying to destroy the very belief system that we have, the faith that we have. We are the enemy to this world. We have literally become the enemy. I never thought I would wake up one day in the United States of America and be considered a terrorist because I'm a Christian. That just I'm still not wrapping my head around this. But this is this is an enemy that is coming for us. And we have a, a responsibility as a watchman to defend this. And I'm not talking about a, a, a physical response. I'm talking about a spiritual response. And that's what Ezekiel is, is, is mentioning here, that the great prophet is mentioning, that God says this is a spiritual battle and one that we must fight in a spiritual sense. But you see, the thing is that there's no men on the wall. The wall is empty. There is no watchman. There is no horn being shouted out saying, hey, we're being persecuted. Hey, you know, things are happening around us. The world is collapsing. You know, we need to hunker down. We need to gather our strength. We need to, to come together in our faith. We need to rise up as men. We need to take hold of our families, our wives, our children, and fight through this in a spiritual battle. We need to rise up as men and say enough is enough, and we need to fight for our beliefs. But that's not happening. I don't hear any trumpets ablazing because we're, we're caught up. In the everyday world, where we're caught up, what's going on, you know, in, in, in the southern hemisphere, at the southern border, in, in you know, in the Middle East and in parts abroad, where we're caught up on controversies, where we're caught up watching the Olympics, whether it's, you know, we're caught up watching, you know, the All-Star Games, the playoffs. You know, we're more concerned at times, you know, if LeBron hit double digits last night, then our country and our families perishing. And that's just the God's honest truth, because we're not making any headway towards towards the latter. We're more concerned about the things of this world than we are concerned about the spiritual things of this world. I can't fault 
pastors and churches and, and the so-called church leaders to sound the alarm in Ezekiel because they're not mandated to do it. He didn't say, you know, son of man, I have placed a, a, a minister or I've placed one of your pastors or I've placed one of you, you know, your prophets up on the wall. He didn't say that. He said, I've placed you, son of man. I chose a man among you to be there. So I'm not going to fault him on this one. Obviously, they're not doing anything. But that's not the case here. The case is we are not doing what we're called to do. And the thing is, he's holding us accountable. You know, we, we go on our lives, our daily lives. And, you know, some of us were police officers. You know, we warn people, hey, you were speeding. And there's consequences for that. I can cite you. Or, hey, you're breaking the law. I can, you know, I can arrest you. If You know, and we warn people constantly all the time. We warn our children, hey, you know. Don't raise your voice. Hey, don't do this. So we're constantly telling people, hey, don't do that. But when it comes to spiritual matters, we stay silent. And God's saying, don't stay silent. Sound the alarm. Sound the trumpet. Warn the people of what's coming. But we're not doing that. We spend our time discussing sports, football, baseball, you know, hockey, anything under the sun. And we're, and we're okay with that. And we're fine with that. And every now and then we'll throw in a little Jesus sprinkle and, you know, and, and we're okay. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll give God that one and a half hours on Sunday or, you know, maybe on Saturday or that three minute prayer throughout the entire day. And, you know, maybe flip through a couple of pages of the Bible here and there. And okay, we're, I'm done. We're, we're good, God. And he's saying, son of man, I've placed you in a position to sound the alarm, to sound the warning. And, and if you do not tell the wicked and the wicked is around us, not, not in, in just in hundreds, in multitudes of millions. If we do not warn them of the impeding doom that is coming upon this society, coming upon this earth in a spiritual sense, then their blood is on our hands. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I didn't sign up for that part of the deal. You know, and, and even the children of Israel said, well, you, you're not being fair, God. But we know the truth. We live the truth. We have it in our hands. Yet we do nothing with it. We don't promote it. We don't talk about it. We don't, we don't exercise it. We don't have that, that sense of urgency. You know, Noah was building an ark when it never rained because he had a sense of urgency of what was coming. Because God told him it was coming. God has told us in Ezekiel 33, it's coming. So you better start blowing that trumpet quick. You better start warning people quickly. You know, you need to be up on that wall because the impending doom is coming and you need to warn others about it. But if we stay silent, the Bible says, then the blood of the wicked is on us. Whether it's fair or whether it's not, however we see it in our eyes, we're not going to get into a theological debate with God on that, that day of judgment. He's going to say, you were born a man, right? Pete standing up, right? Head of your house, right? Ezekiel 33, right? You read it, correct? Well, yeah, but you know, we got no out. There is no out biblically around it. It is what we're called to do. We are called to sound off the alarm. We have a generation that's dying. We have, we have generations of children that have abandoned the faith, generations that are lost that are just in debauchery. Every single day you turn on the news or you read something, it just gets worse. I mean, what, one example is in England. They, they had a, a, a campaign for, for literacy in a library for children, school age, four to seven-year-olds. They brought in, and it is, I'm quoting this verbatim, the rainbowed ass dildo monkey. Yes, you heard me say that correctly. The rainbow ass dildo monkey. And it was a, a gentleman dressed as a rainbow monkey with his butt sticking out and a plastic penis hanging in between his legs. And this was, and he was hired at this library to encourage children for literacy in England. I mean, I can just end it right here with just on that note. 
Nobody is saying, hey, you know, th this is just crazy. I mean, th th we just went, went, went way, way out there. No. Some parents had an uproar about it and, and they apologized. But Mr. Monkey did his show. And the children were there and he ran around and did what Mr. Monkey, Mr. Rainbow Butt Dildo Monkey does when you hire him. This is a public library in England. We say, well, that's crossed the pond, Joe. That has nothing to do with us. No, it plays out in libraries in the United States every day, too. Just ask the drag queen literacy lessons. So we're seeing this chaos and this evil and this destruction upon our earth and upon the, the wickedness of man. But we're concerned about LeBron's double digits, about his numbers not being there. We're looking forward to the NFL kicking off in August. We're, we're looking forward to October to see if the Yankees are going to, you know, crack in and, and see, you know, and they're going to make the, the World Series. Or maybe, hey, what are the Kardashians up to this week? Or, you know, what's going on in my career or focusing in our 401k? And we're focusing on everything around this world. But all those things that we're focusing on will come to an end. They will come to an eventual stop. It will cease to exist. And then at the end of the day, it's going to be you or me and each and every one of us standing before an almighty God. And he's going to bring up the words of Ezekiel 33. And he's going to say, did you do it? Or you didn't do it? Did you warn him? Did you tell him? And then he's going to show us the amount of blood on our hands. And it's going to be catastrophic in, in, in a lot of men's hands, including my own. So, gentlemen, Ezekiel 33 is a wake-up call. It is, it is the ultimate wake-up call. It is the sound that the watchman needs to be on the wall. We need men on that wall. We need men shouting from the rooftops. We need to defend our families. We need to defend our, our beliefs. We need to defend Christianity. We need to defend who we are. We are not terrorists. And we cannot be labeled as terrorists by the largest government on planet Earth because we believe in Jesus Christ. Although these things were written that they were going to happen, that we would be persecuted for his name's sake, that we would, you know, some of us would even be martyred for his name's sake. But that doesn't mean we just sit there and roll over and just take it. The way we fight back is through prayer, is through teaching our children, through the, you know, through, through being engaged in the church. Through being engaged to one another, strengthening ourselves as brothers, being in the word, you know, fasting, praying. Because if we don't do these things, we might skate through and make it and be welcomed through the gates. But that will not stop us from having the blood of the wicked on our hands. That will not stop us from saying, well, did you? Preach to your neighbors. Did you preach to the people when you had an opportunity? Did you at least tell them? Or were you were your silent complicit enough? Ezekiel 33 shouts to us today. The prophet screams at us. Is there a watchman on the wall today in 2021? In Israel, in your Israel, in your home, are we standing at the wall saying to our family, it's time to build an ark, and I got to start hammering. Or are we just caught up in the day-to-day -day of everything that's going around us and that's compelling us and steering us outside of the word of God and outside of the duties that we've been called to do as Christian men? Because a lot of us are. I think it's more of us that are inclined into the world than we are in the gospel. The numbers of men leaving the church is amazing. It's in droves. There's more women pastors than men pastors almost. There's more women in seminary than males pastors right now. It's almost a two to one, three to one ratio. Why? Because we've abandoned. We've abandoned our duty as being a watchman over our home. When we see our children struggling with depression and anxiety and drug use and alcohol and pornography and our homes are being destroyed. And there's a wall that is crumbling with a trumpet sitting on it, but there's not a man that will man it 
and sound off on it and say the enemy is coming. We need to prepare. We need to rise up and fight. And he said, woe to you. Woe. And when you hear the word woe in the Bible, it shivers down my back when I hear that because I know what's coming. And he says, I've made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Your Israel, your house, you are the watchman. Plain and simple. There's no two ways around it. You are the watchman of your house. I am the watchman of my house. And if I don't sound that trumpet, then the blood is on these hands. Nobody else. I can't blame my pastors. I can't blame my neighbors. I can't blame the church leaders. I can't blame anyone except this guy right here, the guy that I look at in the mirror every single day. That is the guy that I have to blame because it's my lack of duty that has caused destruction on my Israel. And if I fail to sound that trumpet, and I look to the east, and I look to the west, and I look north, and I look south, and I see your homes and your lives, and I fail to do that, then that blood is on me. Then your blood is on me. We come out here week after week. I could probably spend my time doing something else. I'm sure you can spend your time somewhere else for an hour, hour and a half on Thursday nights and not here. But the fact that you're here and that I'm here means that we're standing on that wall. That we're we're, we're trying to blow that trumpet as loud as we can. I can engage myself in so many things. You know, I have an autistic child. I I, I can devote myself to to, to that cause and and just be frantic about it and finding a cure and doing everything I can. Or for my older one with with Tourette's and, and, you know, and and just join every support group and be there every night and, you know, and in every campaign and every walk and everything. But if I did all that, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, what have I done? Nothing. You're a good father. You you support, you know, the, the, the illness that your child has. And you're supporting it. I support it by prayer. I support it by strength. I support it by being here for her. But if I don't preach the word of God to her or to both of them or to my family, I've done nothing. And if I don't preach it to my neighbors and I don't preach it to my brothers, I've done nothing. Because there's going to come a day when autism doesn't exist, where Tourette's doesn't exist, where cancer doesn't exist, where none of this that we see with our own eyes will exist. There only exists one thing, you before God. And the person that's going to be next to you, is he going to be there because you told him? Or is he going to condemnation because you failed to mention it to him? And that is a question we must ask ourselves. Every time we walk out our door, look at the people that you visually see with your eyes and ask and ask yourself, is that person going to be condemned or do I have the opportunity to make a difference in their lives? Talking about LeBron James or talking about the NBA or the NFL or whatever, or, you know, about anything is not going to get anyone into the gates of heaven. It is not going to save anybody. A doctor can save a person's life on the operating table. Yes, they can. And, they can, and most doctors play God and they think that they're gods because they can save somebody in the operating table and say, oh, I saved his life. You know, I performed a 12-hour operation and he's alive. But that person's going to die eventually. And no doctor can take that from them. And he's going to die regardless. But we have the power of giving that person the, the true words of Christ, and that will mean eternal life for that person. We have the power to save lives for eternity, not for a moment, not for a second, but for eternity. Yet we don't use that power. We take it for granted. We hide it. We don't talk about it too out loud because we don't want people to think we're nuts. Now, we're just considered terrorists. But the word of God is clear. What our mandate is. What we are here to do. Don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I don't know what God wants me to do with my life. Oh, I don't know what I should do with my life. Read Ezekiel 33, and it's plain as, it's plain as it can be. He wants you to be a watchman over the house of Israel. Your house. 
And when you see the enemy coming, sound the alarm. And sound the alarm loud enough that not only your house can hear it, but your neighbor's house can hear it. And the neighbor up front and the neighbor behind you. And your brother that's standing next to you. So you're both clear that the enemy is coming. And you both are both clear that defenses need to be attained and need to be fortified and that you need to fight. Because if the enemy comes and the wall is empty and there's no man there, there's just a trumpet on the floor, he's going to destroy everything in that house. There will be nothing left. Not on this earth and not in the next life. God has called each and every one of us for such a time as this. Gentlemen, if there's any time in history to blow the trumpet as a watchman, it is today, 2021. Look around you. Look at the chaos. Look at the destruction. The world has gone mad. And we are the only light of hope. But if there's no watchman on that tower, if there's no watchman sounding off the alarm, it's going to be engulfed and burned to the ground. And whatever remnants it is left of survivability will make it to the other side. But it's going to come with a price. There's, going to, there's a price tag on that. We can make it. But God said he's going to hold us accountable for those who didn't, for those who, will, who weren't forewarned. And he's clear about it. If you tell them and they reject it, it's on them. But if you don't tell them and they never heard it and they die, it's on us. I don't want to be that man. I don't want that blood on my hands. I don't want my neighbor's blood. I don't want my brother's blood. I don't want my family's blood on my hand. I want to walk into the kingdom of heaven with clean hands and say that everything I did was to battle for the watchman next to me. Everything I did was to fight for the next guy next to me. Did he make it? That was on him. But needless to say, I went out fighting. I went out inviting. I went out preaching. I went out teaching. I went out prophesizing. I went out doing everything that you allowed me to do to get the word across. I blew that trumpet until my lungs had no more breath, air in my lungs to to blow it anymore. That's how I want to go out. That's why I think we all need to go out. Not bloodied, but being that watchman, sounding that trumpet, and letting the world know of the impending doom that it's coming. And it's coming. But let us be men that stand upon that wall, warn the people, and make a difference not only in our lives and our families, but in our brothers and their families and our generations to come. Gentlemen, be that watchman on the wall. Be the watchman on the wall. Start blowing the trumpets, man. Start blowing the trumpets now. Guys, that's all I got. Man. The floor is yours tonight.